Before we jump into today's video, I need to know, share with me in the comments, do you like heavy hitter fragrances? Do you prefer a powerhouse fragrance that really packs a punch? Or are you the type of person that just enjoys a lighter, softer scent? Which camp do you fall in? In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you 15 heavy hitter fragrances from my collection. And of course, I have to have an honorable mention. I was tagged to do this by Nisha at Spicy Looks. I hope you'll go check out her content. She's got a fabulous collection and a super fun personality. Let's jump into the heavy hitter fragrances. What do I mean by that term? For me, when I think of a heavy hitter fragrance, it's something that I am likely to pull out probably in cooler weather. I do have some summer heavy hitters. If you're interested in warm weather heavy hitters, I'd be happy to do a video on that. When I think of the coldest months of the year, what comes to mind for me in terms of the fragrances are those that you spray on, they pack a punch, they make their presence known, they enter the room before you, all of those sorts of things. They have to be sort of loud and they have to last a long time. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is my honorable mention because I'm not sure that people would really associate it with winter. And on me, it has more moderate performance than super long lasting. But initially it is fairly beast in nature when you first spray it on. It's Organza by Givenchy. A heavily floral fragrance with a lot of vanilla that sweetens it up, which I think could make it appropriate for winter. The bottle's super quirky. It looks like a woman with a dress on. It also has a tuberose note in here. There's a nutty accord and it's slightly woody, but for the most part, what you'll get out of it is heavy florals and a lot of vanilla. You spray this on and immediately it just radiates off of you like none other. It's super powerful, maybe even overwhelming to some. And then it, it mellows out quite a bit, at least for me, unless I just go nose blind to it and I'm not sure. To me, this has moderate performance and it's a very mature fragrance. It's a real sort of powerhouse floral. If you like a traditional fragrance, if you're an 80s kid, a 70s kid, even a 90s kid, and I'm talking about those fragrances that the elder women in your family would have worn, your aunties, your, your mom, your grandmother even, and they hug you and they envelop you in like that heavy floral that has a lot of sweetness, maybe cloying, this is the one for you, Organza. It is beautiful, but just be careful with it. So first on my list of 15 heavy hitters is Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. Another one I would totally wear in the summer, but is best in the fall and in the winter months. So as this one opens up, you get a peppery sage grapefruit at the top. Aromatic, unusual. I call this like the ultimate boyfriend fragrance because it reminds me of the smell of a man's skin who has been outdoors working a little bit. He did have a fresh shower before he <laughs> went outdoors and chopped wood or whatever he was doing out there. And he comes in and you can smell his sort of natural body aroma. It's like that mixed with maybe some really watered down cologne. To some that sounds gross, to me it's wonderful. There's also a pistachio note in here in the middle and it dries down woody and musky and still aromatic. It's a very unusual fragrance. One that um, is for someone who's a little bit daring and looking to smell different from the crowd and you don't mind a fragrance that leans a little masculine. Stash from Sarah Jessica Parker. Second on my list is Spirito Fiorentino from Tiziana Terenzi. A lot of people think this smells like Baccarat Rouge 540, and it does. I would say this is a denser fragrance than BR 540. There's mostly saffron and like some light florals as it opens up, but when this settles down in the middle and in the base, what you get is mostly a leather fragrance with some woody touches and musk and sandalwood for the most part. There's something really special about this. I consider this a very sexy fragrance. 
Again, yes, it has some feminine touches, but there are some masculine aspects of this as well. So again, this is an adventurous fragrance, but it's powerful when you put it on, everyone's gonna smell you, and it lasts the whole day. One of my favorites, Speedy Toe Fiorentina. My third choice is one that I nearly decluttered <laughs> because my family hates it. It's super strong, but I decided to keep it because it's a classic. So it's sitting up on a vintage shelf in my bedroom. It's Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. You know, I grew up smelling this everywhere. A lot of the women in my life wore opium. I nearly gave this away. Can you believe that or sold it? But I'm gonna keep it. This is a warm, ambery, spicy fragrance that has mostly at the top, there's a hint of citrus that comes out at the top that makes it bright and spicy at the same time. And then it settles down into this cozy, ambery, warm fragrance with a lot of vanilla. Great for cold weather. If you don't mind a powerhouse fragrance that really has some strong like 70s and 80s DNA. Opium, Yves Saint Laurent, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Fourth in my lineup is one that I haven't talked about in a while. I do have a dedicated single fragrance video to this if you'd like to look it up. It's from La Yukawam's line of Rasazi and it's Orchid Prairie. This is the same line as Jasmine Wisp. This fragrance is pretty powerful. I describe this as like grape juice that has uh, been <laughs> dripped over some wet rotting wood. Sounds disgusting, doesn't it? I think it smells great. Some people compare this to Alien and Velvet Orchid from Tom Ford, Alien from Mugler. And I think there are some aspects of both of those fragrances that if you mix them together could give you something like this. It's mostly, it does have like this grapey thing like Alien does. I call it like smelling purple and there's some oud in here, vanilla, there's also some rose and I think some other floral notes as well. That's the best way I can describe it. Imagine like a soft grape juicy scent <laughs> mixed with oud or, or um, like a woody, some woody tones. Yeah, and some oud, a little bit of musk, a little vanilla and like a hint of rose and you might have a sense of what this smells like. I think it's gorgeous. Again, none of these fragrances are for people that are shy about wearing fragrances. You have to be a little bit adventurous. Orchid Prairie. Fifth on the list is another one that I almost decluttered because I can't wear this. But because it is a vintage, beautiful fragrance, even though I can't wear it, I wanna share it with you, you might love it. And I'm keeping it and I'm putting it on my vintage shelf and it's 24 for Borg. I'm lying, it's not that I can't wear this. <laughs> I would wear this to a super special occasion event, like a gala, some place where I had to wear a ball gown. When is the last time that I wore a ball gown? Maybe 15 years ago, but I have been to other formal events since then and certainly been to evening work events where you have to dress up even though it's not a ball gown, but this is like a ball gown kind of fragrance. Um, how I would describe this, it's a super pungent floral with some citrus mixed in. It's also musky and it's ambery and it has vanilla as well. If you sniff it long enough, you'll even pick up an iris note in here and some patchouli. So there's a lot happening in 24 Faubourg. It's another one of these fragrances that will take over. So be careful if you buy this, but if you're the kind of person that really wants to have strong presence and you want the heaviest of heavy hitters, Here's one for you, 24 full board. The sixth fragrance on my list is one that is rather masculine, but I think smells wonderful on me. At least I think so. It is Jo Malone's Bronze Wood and Leather. This is a beautiful leathery fragrance that also has, even though tobacco is not listed as a note, it gives me that kind of sense 
Um, and this smells like another fragrance in my husband's collection, Dark Lord, but not quite, quite that heavy like Dark Lord is. This is one that is very, I think, wearable by a woman. In addition to the leather, there's a little bit of juniper and vetiver that kind of ground this fragrance and give it a real sense of earthiness, slightly smoky too, but very, very heavy on the leather. Like this, almost like a wet leather. Yeah, it's just, there's something deep and sensual about this that I just love. If you wanna smell like a saddle, <laughs> saddle that you would ride on with some earthiness mixed in but also lightened there's something even though this is a heavy fragrance it's not quite as heavy as many leathers or maybe it is i don't know maybe i don't know what i'm talking about i just think it's beautiful i just think it's beautiful i really do i really do it also reminds me of like wet dirt all in one leather wet dirt a little juniper a little vetiver some tobacco even though it's not listed mixed in there somewhere. In the lucky number seven slot is one of my favorite blind buys of the year. You'll see this in an upcoming haul video. It is Opulent Musk from Latafa. The bottle is so cute. It smells wonderful. This is an opulent musky fragrance. It's got saffron and I think there's even a little bit of lemon at the top but mostly saffron Again, some of this reminds you of Baccarat Rouge 540, but they're not the same at all. It has, it has some florals in the middle and there are resins in the base. I think there's like a fur resin in here, if I'm not mistaken, and of course, a lot of musk. In addition to the bottle being hefty and gorgeous, this fragrance, when I first sprayed it on, just was amazing. I did like a spritz on my hand and husband loved it right away. And it lasted and lasted and lasted and lasted and lasted and lasted. <laughs> it went on and on till the morning. I sprayed it on at like eight o'clock at night and it went all the way through the morning. That one little spray, I had washed my hands and everything um, and woke up and it was still on there. Beautiful. Um, could easily lean either direction, feminine or masculine, maybe a nice mix of both, maybe completely unisex, maybe depends on who wears it and how you perceive it, but it is what it is, an opulent musk. It's enveloping, it's warm, it's beautiful, it's elegant. This is a very elegant fragrance. In the number eight slot is one that we all know and some love and some can't not stand. Oud Bouquet from Maison Lancôme, and also Shagaf Oud from Swiss Arabian, which I didn't bring out because they're pretty similar. They're almost the same. In fact, I should probably cut my list down to 14 and just talk about these two together. This is Al Haramain's uh, Oud 36 Nui. These are so alike, except if they're twins, this is the male twin and this is the female twin. This one is slightly more masculine than this one. We got rose, we've got praline, we've got oud. There's a sweetness in here, like a smoky, deep, resinous sweetness that is all enveloping. If you've watched me from the beginning, you've heard the horror stories about how I overspray this. And by overspray, I'm talking about four or five sprays. And I mean, I think we know that I usually spray myself down with fragrances because I have no shame. Everyone around me just collapsed. <laughs> Everywhere I went, it was awful. I suffocated people, headaches, migraines, you know, wall wallpaper, like blistered up and came off the walls and all of that. This is some strong stuff only to be worn by the super brave and only in like the coldest of weather or the coolest, coolest of nights and worn very lightly. Same with this Al Haramein. I have not been disappointed yet by any of the Al Haramein fragrances that I've purchased. I have liked them all and loved many. This uh, Oud 36 Nui is a bomb. It is a powerhouse fragrance. Another one that you only need a couple of sprays of and it's gonna go and go and go all day into the night and into the next morning. You can't go wrong with either of these. Price-wise, I think this one is, depending on where you get it, priced somewhere above 150, maybe 175 US. You can always get it on sale. 
on the Lancome site. This one I paid somewhere in the like $75 range for. Excellent fragrances. If you like heavy hitters, these are the heaviest of the heavy. These are heavyweights. Heavyweights in the heavy hitter category. So that was eight and nine. 10 on my list is also from Swiss Arabian and it is Shagaf Oud Aswad. Whoa, <laughs> we got this. We ordered this from Amazon, opened the box in the kitchen. I sprayed a little bit on my husband. He walked across the kitchen. We have a long kitchen and um, he was far away and I could smell it as though it were right under my nose. That's off of one spray. This has rose and it has saffron and thyme and some other um, aromatic like herbs in there. And, but it's mostly like a heavy leathery fragrance, spicy, leathery, warm fragrance with that rose note in there to um, have it not be too, you know, on the masculine side. A woman can wear this, but I do think that it leans um, masculine. There's some sandalwood and vanilla in here as well. I love the bottle. This is a powerhouse of a fragrance. Do not play with Shagaf Oud Aswad. <laughs> This one, this one came to beat you up. A spray or two of this will take you well into a very cool evening. We're on to the final five of the heavy hitter list, and I have none other than Shalimar Eau de Parfum. I'm gonna tell you, this reminds me quite a lot. There's some similarities with opium. The way that they differ is that this is heavier on the citrus at the top, and there's also like a hint of, I hesitate to use the word powder, but there's like, a, this is softer in some ways. It's almost like it has a cushiony background versus this one. Um, a little bit of incense in here. There's an iris note in here that I think adds a little bit of that powdery touch as well. And maybe also the tonka bean and vanilla that soften this up maybe further than opium which can be a little bit harsher on the nose. And by harsh, I mean like more, more of a punch. This one is softer, but still super strong. And a lot of people can't take this. It has a civet note in it too, although I don't think that the civet is prominent. If you're newer to fragrances, civet is a really animal-like note. In other words, it smells a little bit like urine, <laughs> like animal urine. Um, I, I, I struggled with this for a long time, but it's beautiful in its own right. And it is a powerful fragrance. You spray this on, the projection is wild and it lasts a super long time. And it's just one of, another one of those classic, like old school fragrances that is everywhere. It's everywhere. It was everywhere in the 80s and in the 90s. As well. Number 12 on the list is one that I've talked about recently. And I think is just one of the most beautiful fragrances for cold months and it's Dior Addict, <laughs> none other than the Vanilla Queen herself. There's some florals in here, but what I get out of this mostly is a really warm, beautiful vanilla with tonka bean and sandalwood. This is one of those fragrances that will have you feeling the most womanly, really just a beautiful, all enveloping fragrance. Some people think this is too much, too strong, um, headache inducing, but I think it's just right, especially in the colder weather. It's one that I had to grow into as I got older. I you know, wore this in my youth, but I probably shouldn't have because I didn't know what I was playing with. This sister here means business. She is strong um, and she's beautiful. She's beautiful. There's none other than the alluring, heavily vanillic sweet that tonka bean that beautiful tonka bean in here dior addict number 13 on the list is one that i don't think i've talked about much on my channel it is a challenging fragrance to wear because it is super powerful and it is essence number three ambra by illy Saab. this is a gorgeous amber sandalwood fragrance but it is super deep and strong it's like a highly concentrated amber fragrance cut just ever so slightly by the sandalwood in here. It has a little bit of um, patchouli as well that almost amps up the amber part of it. 
I know that doesn't make sense, but that's kind of how I see those notes playing together. It's almost like the patchouli boosts up the amber and makes the amber even stronger. Um, and all of that is, you know, surrounded by a little bit of sandalwood. It's super duper strong, maybe a bit too much on the amber. It reminds me almost like if you had an incredibly concentrated version of stash, like if you distilled this down into its essence and crushed that together into like the strongest substance, you might get a sense of what this uh, amber essence number three from Elisop smells like. Super strong, super powerful, super long lasting. You really need to mean to wear this, just like all of these other fragrances. Number 14 on the list, we have two more. This has quickly become an all-time favorite for me and for my husband. We argued over this fragrance to the point where I just ended up getting a backup because I had a feeling that we were gonna go through it really quickly. He sprays this all the time. <laughs> it's one of his favorites, he maybe has like he has a little shelf of fragrances, but there are about three or four that he rotates through most often because he loves those the most, including Sandal Ruby from Catalina Herrera's Confidential line. The bottles on these are just glorious, super heavy. They're weapons. You can hurt someone, they piss you off, just throw it across the room at their head. Don't do that. Don't don't harm people. I'm I don't mean that, I swear. I'm just I'm kidding. Intruders, yeah, throw this at their head. <laughs> this is the super warm, spicy fragrance. It's got cinnamon in it. It has sandalwood. There are some florals in here too, but it's that cinnamon at the top. And it doesn't smell cinnamon like a baking cinnamon. It's cinnamon mixed with the other notes. But there's something so special about this and it stays fairly linear it's not one that develops a lot over time but you spray once or twice your entire house is going to smell like sandal ruby it's to me a very super sexy powerful fragrance very unisex that's not true it actually leans a little bit feminine to me but don't tell my husband it smells fantastic on him. He sprays it on and I'm sniffing him all over the house. I spray it on, he's sniffing me all day. <laughs> it's just, it's a gorgeous, super heavy, all enveloping, all encompassing, uplifting fragrance. Uplifting in that it like elevates you for the day. I don't know, this is some beautiful stuff in here. And number 15, perhaps the most powerful fragrance in my collection maybe even more powerful than Oud Bouquet or Oud 36 Nui. Hard to believe. Nishane Suede et Safran. Et Safran. Suede, su, <laughs> suede et Safran. <laughs> I didn't expect to love this the way that I do. This was a blind buy. I saw it on sale and I love a good leather fragrance. That's what this is. It's a leather and musk Although it's not listed as a note, this has a tobacco accord in it. I get the saffron, I get the musk, I get a heavy leather. There's a ginger note in here that is slightly detectable, but really like as a supporting actor to the saffron and the leather in here. Very heavily masculine and somehow I think it works really beautifully on me. It smells wonderful on my husband. He wasn't so crazy about this. I bought it for him. But you know, I buy fragrances from my husband that I'm probably gonna like. And <laughs> I consider his collection mine as well. Super clean leather, like a crisp, clean leather. Whereas the bronze wood and leather smells a lot, like I said, like a saddle mixed with some earthiness. It's more like gritty that way. This is more of like a clean, crisp, leather with that little hint of ginger little hint beautiful fragrance that brings me to the end of my video i've shared with you 15 beautiful heavy hitter fragrances and organza as the honorable mention listen don't be secretive what are your heavy hitter fragrances 
share it in the comments so that we can all enjoy the fragrances together. May you smell fragrant and wonderful this winter. Go knock them dead.